Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Morning Leap. This is our session where we go through and develop our trade plan for the day. We start with a macro to micro view of the market, take a look at the different trends and the different time frames, and then we look at the structure of the market, drill down to our trade levels, what our targets are, and what our hypotheses are for the day. This is a subscription room, so if you're interested in finding out more about the subscription, uh, we do a live session each morning pre-market, and then we do live trading and analysis during the course of the day. Send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com or Skype me at Doug underscore McKay. I'll be the one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. If you want to see other videos of pre-market uh, trade plan setup, uh, do a uh, search on YouTube for Quantum Leap Futures, and please uh, you know, follow me on Twitter at Crazy2 and like if you like what you see. Before we get going, let me get the uh, disclaimer done. This information is for the purpose of educating members who want to expand the knowledge of the business. Trading is not for trading or investment advice. You and only you are responsible for the trades or investment decisions you make. Trading futures or any instrument risk involves risk loss. Please consider carefully whether futures or options are appropriate to financial situation. Only risk capital should be used when trading futures or options. Investors could lose more than initial investment. Nobody at uh, Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence and your own trade metrics. Okay, so let's just start with uh, our, our news. There is no real news today. Um, we've got 9.30, we've got uh, the Aussie monetary policy and motor vehicle, and then, uh, you know, Japan's monetary policy is tentative for the day. So no real scheduled news for the day. Uh, taking a look at our trade plan last week. Last week was a tough week for me. Uh, I did end up positive, but I had a couple of days where I really got off the reservation, and it was tough trading. It was very, very tough. So if you had a tough week, shake it off, you know, uh, bear down and uh, and really control your trade entries and your risks this week. So, you know, we basically, we were looking for a rotational day. Um, as long as we stayed above the 1925, we were looking for a rotational day with an upside bias, uh, take out the overnight high. We actually took out the overnight low and the overnight high uh, on Friday. So that was, uh, that was a know, 28% probability, um, and it was just very choppy, And uh, but our levels uh, really traded well. You can see that. Got to get back to really focusing on, uh, you know, making our entries at those levels and taking our shots. Let's take a look at uh, the trends and where we are. I always like to start my morning in a basic uh, trend mode to see where we are in the different time frames. I start with a monthly basic candlestick chart with a 9 EMA and 20 SMA and basically I'm looking for slope and separation and where we are within the trend. You can see on the monthly we're still trading below uh, the 9 and the 20. The month open this month uh, on the December contract is 1957.50 on the September contract 1965.50 um, we're below the 9 and the 20. We do have uh, an inside bar for this month, but we still have a lot of month left. But we have, you know, challenged the trend itself on the monthly. On the weekly, you know, we've been talking about this uh, tech gap, FUBAR, Mr. Sneaky, and uh, closing the tech gap. We almost got to close the tech gap last week, but we didn't quite get to the 9. Uh, we're back now uh, on an inside, possible inside, but it's the first day of the week. Um, we're basically getting si sideways consolidation right now. Our week open is uh, 1953, so we are below the week open so far, uh, but lots of uh, week left. But the overall trend, we're getting slope and separation to the downside. The overall trend is to the downside. On the daily, we got basically we have the same pattern where we had the FUBAR tech gap, Mr. Sneaky, came up and closed the gap, and then we've been struggling to hold the nine and the twenty. We challenged the uh, the twenty on uh, you know uh, last week, but then we reject it. So we still have a downward trend, although the trend is weakening. We've lost slope and separation, and we're consolidating. So we have to wait and see. The big number today is whether or not we're going to get above that 1960 area, 
and get it back above the uh, the 20 SMA. But the overall trend on the daily is still down. On the four hour, basically we've got consolidation. There's no real trend here on the four hour. We're almost in. A, if you look at this, we're almost in a downward channel though. I put a uh, A channel here so we've got a bit of a downward channel going although it's more consolidation and then you know a, a break above the upper channel uh, is going to bring you above that 1960 so just keep an eye on uh, on this pattern right here but the overall trend is sideways or consolidation on the four hour on the one hour, same thing. We've got uh, we had a start of a trend uh, on the way up. We do have a uh, naked cross down here at 19.39 on the uh, on the one hour, 30 minute, bit of a downward trend, a little bit of slope and separation, uh, almost a downward channel as well. So uh, got some uh, some weakness showing coming in on the uh, 15 minute. We are below the 9 and the 20. We do have some slope and separation. We've just closed out a tech gap. And uh, we do have a naked cross up here at 1954. Going through all the naked crosses, we've got some above us and some below us right now. The majority are above us, but we do have uh, ones at 1935 and 1939.75 uh, uh, below us. So uh, we have to see if we uh, take out the ones below and then rotate back up. But we do have quite a few that are on the upside. And then last but not least, we've got the five minute. In the five minute, we had a nice strong trend, created that uh, tech gap, closed the tech gap, and now we're above the 9 and the 20. So we're challenging this downward trend as we move down in the time frames, the downward trend is being challenged. So let's take a look at the structure. I mean, it's ugly. You know, anybody that tells you any differently, uh, uh, give their head a shake. A lot of gaps. All kinds of gaps in this area. Uh, the overall microcomposite that I'm watching right now goes from the uh, 21st, that break, uh, significant breakout candle. The value area high is uh, 76.75. The value area low is 1905 and a quarter, and we're trading 51 right now. The smaller time frame, the last four-day uh, microcomposite, the VPOC is 1940. Uh, the value area high is 53. The value area low is 28. Uh, I'm expecting chop. I mean, we've got the overall microcomposite going from the 21st. The VPOC is up here at 61, and then the you know we've accepted value the last four days at 40. We've uh, you know we've come up and we opened up uh, above last night. Our uh, open uh, was uh, 1953. Uh, I think we went up as high as uh, 64.50 uh, and then couldn't hold and we've come all the way back down and we put in uh, a low at 46.50 and now we've rotated back up and, you know, we're trading uh, right, right in the middle of this uh, price rejection. And I think this is going to be challenged, and we're going to we're going to chop around in this area. Our naked close is at uh, 50.25. Looks like we're you know if we open up in this area, we're going to take out that naked close. Key here is whether or not we hold this 48.75. If we don't hold the 48.75, look for them to uh, take out or since we still have 35 minutes in the Globex, uh, if we can't hold in the Globex and they get below that 48.75, possibility of expanding the low in the Globex below that 46.50. Uh, but 48.75 is going to be a defining area for us, but I think it's going to be choppy and it's going to be tough to trade off of that. Uh, the value area high is 53 right now that uh, on this four-day microcomposite. We get above there, then I think we get some price discovery and we go up and challenge uh, that 55, 57, and 60 area, uh, maybe even come back into the uh, longer-term balance here at uh, 61.75. Uh, but this whole area is still 
a lot of undetermined fair value here, a lot of gaps, uh, a lot of battle going back and forth. So it's still going to be uh, tough trading. Uh, the volume and the range has uh, come back to somewhat normal. Our 20-day ATR is still running 49.13. So off of the low of the uh, of the uh, night so far at 1946.50, our upside ATR target is 1995.75. That's right around the 50% retracement of the significant breakout candle. Uh, the downside ATR uh, candle is down at 1915.50. Range on Friday, 24 and a quarter on the uh, RTH and 25 on the full session. So we're getting a little bit uh, you know, back to normal in terms of the ranges, but anything is uh, can still happen. So let's take a look at our Globex, start moving our numbers over and determining where we're going to trade from. Uh, our overnight low, of course, as I said, is down here at uh, 46.50, which basically is where our value area high was for yesterday. So they've rejected the value area high. We're trading 49. Uh, you know, it's quite possible we could come and expand the overnight low and get back inside of this value uh, from Friday. Our overnight high is up at 64 and a quarter. And currently our VPOC is uh, at 54. And we have a bit of an LVN here at 55. 60.50, I'm going to pay attention to. That's uh, right at the uh, at the uh, naked VPOC there. But other than that, there's not a lot of information. Uh, I'm still looking at this uh, 48.75 as being a uh, a key area for us. So let me just expand this out. So, but we've been chopping around. You can see that there's an LVN here uh, from that. Uh, late Friday afternoon push uh, and this distribution up here. And the LVN is at 48.75. Our CLVN is at uh, 49. So I'm going to use this area as a trade area, but I'm going to be very cautious about it. Um, <clears throat> what I really want to see is them take out the overnight low or expand it, you know, as we still have lots of time, and get inside a value. So I'm going to also have a trade area down here at the 46.50, and then below that I'm targeting the 43 uh, with continu possible continuation down here to test this 40. Now we've got, you know, short, long-term price rejection here on the composite being challenged and turning into short-term price uh, acceptance. This is a phenomenon that you'll see as they battle key areas. And you can see we've got 4050 as a long-term uh, price rejection, but we've got uh, 40 as a uh, you know a price acceptance. So it's very hard to uh, to trade off of an area like this because you're you know you're both in value uh, and and price acceptance um, on the short term. So You've got this LVN here at 40, and you've got the uh, midpoint and the VWAP at 39 and a quarter. I'm actually going to use 39 and a quarter as my trade area rather than the 49, because I think we'll have stronger reaction here from traders at the 39.75. I mean, the 39.75 than we will at the 40.50. Uh, but it's still going to be tough here. The real safe trade would be if you wait and get below the open of Friday's RTH and below this LVN here at 36. So I'm going to put 36 in as a uh, trade area as well, with the target being the value area low and the HVN from the lower distribution. Okay, you had the VPOC pretty much you know, all day down here at 34, and then it shifted up into the close at uh, to the 43, and then just below it, that you've got the uh, the HVN and the uh, and the uh, value area low. So I'm going to use that as 
uh, a trade area, I'm going to use the 34 as a target below 36. And then if we break below the value area, then we've got to watch this 2950 with 2750 just below us. So I'm going to use 2950. This will only be an add-on trade. So if we break through it, I'll add on for the move to test the 2750, uh, but I won't trade to the top side off of this. I'll have to wait till I get above 32. And then we've got the 2750, which is the uh, break of the uh, Friday RTH session. And then the key level to me and the key line in the sand for lower price discoveries, we keep bouncing off of uh, this area, this 25. If we get below 25, then I'm looking for further continuation lower <coughs> to come down and challenge, you know, uh, this area down here in the 18 to 13 level uh, with targets at 23, 2175, uh, 1875, a little bit of support here at 17, but the main target below is going to be this 1350, but I'm actually going to move it up today uh, to the ATR target below, which is at 1915.50. And then below that, we've got the uh, the uh, 12 uh, naked uh, VPOC, the 1150 CLVN, and then a very important number is going to be uh, the 1905. And this is actually just a target now. It's not the main target. And then if we get below the... 0475, which is the, it's going to be 0450 now. That's the CLVN. That puts us below the microcomposite value area at, uh, at 1905 and a quarter and below the CLVN. And at that point in time, I really think we're going to see a move into uh, these 1800s. Not expecting it today, but got to be prepared for it. As long as we hold the 48.75, get above this 49.50, I'm sorry, 48, 48.75, uh, look for them to come up and take out the naked close, which is going to be our main target above at the 50 and a quarter. Uh, above 50 and a quarter, we've got the, uh, the range high and then a moved back into the overnight balance at 54 with the CHVN at 55. Just be be wary of this 53 area. And I'm going to actually bring this up to include 53. So I don't really want to get long until we're above 53 because I don't want to reject off of the microcomposite value area and rotate back inside of this upper distribution, which is quite possible. Um, and then you've got the 55 and 55.50. I'm going to use 55 as the target. Just above it, you've got 57 as a trade area. And then above 57, then I think we've got a strong move into our main target above, which is going to be the 61.75. That's the microcomposite VPOC going all the way back to the 21st. Um, that is the most traded price in this whole balance area with the overnight high just above us at 64 and a quarter, 68, 50 is, uh, is going to be uh, a possible rejection point. Uh, we've got the 6950 microcomposite VPOC. This is a three-day microcomposite VPOC that they tried to hold above before they gapped back down again. So they gapped up to it, tried to accept it, couldn't hold it, and they fell back down. So we could see some responsive sellers coming in, in here <clears throat> you know, at this level. But if they come up here and they accept this uh, 69.50 area and, stay, and hold the 68.75, 68.50 it should be, 68.50, and hold the 69.50 uh, microcomposite VPOC, then I'm looking for a move up 
into testing the 75 and 7675. Remember, 7675 is now the microcomposite uh, value area high. And then above that, we've got uh, the naked close at 7950. It's really not a lot up here. If we're up in this area here, I'm looking for them to come all the way up into the 8575 without much resistance. It's kind of air up here. Um, there's not much up here until we actually get up into the 8575 and into our major targets up here. These still are, we've got the head and sh inverted head and shoulder pattern that has not been invalidated, does not get invalidated until we trade below 1875 uh, on the uh, September contract, um, and then the 61.8% retracement of this whole move down off of the 2100, um, and then our uh, our 50% of the uh, significant breakout candle up here at 95. You know, I'm still targeting here. Um, we're in a you know we're in a choppy zone, but it's you know the in the last five days. They're holding value, you know, in this 1940 area. As long as they do and they don't get below the 25, uh, you know, as a key area, but 05 and a quarter as a major area, then we're just chopping and we're, you know, we're just uh, consolidating. And uh, you can have two-sided trading. Get above, you know, the 57, then you want to be thinking, you know, I want to be just taking the dips and buying the dips here because we're probably likely to come up and test these upper areas. Above 76.75, I wouldn't even be thinking of shorting. I'd be looking for that move into the 85 and 95 and 99 and a quarter level. So that's what I'm looking at in the, uh, in the uh, ES. Let's take a quick look at gold. Wrong chart. There's the right chart. And gold, uh, you know, we got down, we went down, and we dipped to the uh, below the 1100 and got that 9770. But from there on, okay, they have not broken back below uh, the 1100. Uh, so key line right now is 1101.70. Uh, you know, we're just basically chopping around this 1106.50 area. Um, you really can't take a trade, in my mind, until you get below the 1100 and below the value area low. If you want to be aggressive, you can take the short from 1101.70 down to test the 1100, but I think the safe trade is to break the 1100. If they break it, I think they'll come down and challenge this 97.70 and expand it down to 95.30. I'm looking for this 91.40 area, and then I'm going to start looking to see how uh, how the responsive buyers step in, and if they step in strong in this area um, and come back up and break above 1100, I'm going to shoot to build a swing position long in uh, in gold. If they can't hold the 1100 or they don't bounce off of this 1091.40, then there's not much holding us up all the way down to the 1074. But I really really be looking for a move back down towards the 1,000 level, believe it or not. Uh, 1,100 is going to be a psychological level if we break it again, uh, and I think we'll uh, see a bigger move down. But if we just dip down and they if the responsive buyers step in at 91.40, break back above 1,100, then I think we got a nice trade up into 1,106.50 and 11.16, and we can build a swing position to, you know, to hang on to see Okay, if we get continuation up again, uh, the first big major target is going to be up here into the 1154, 1155 area again, uh, where we tried to hold value on that last push up uh, where we got as high as fractal high at 1169.80. Anyway, that's what I'm looking at on gold. Uh, you know, we're holding that, uh, that uh, you know, 49 uh, area so far. Um, so if they can hold that break above the uh, 53 level, then I think we get a move up into the overnight balance at 54 and target that 55. And then we'll see how they handle that 57 level. If they get above that, then I think you get a pretty good shot into the 61.75 and possible continuation to the overnight high at the 64 uh, and a quarter. Um, you know, the overnight low is down here at 46. So if they leave it alone and break out of range, 
uh, and start moving up, then I think we get a slow grind up into the uh, into the overnight high. If they can't hold above the range, then I think they're going to come down and test the value area and take out that uh, uh, the overnight low. So that's what I'm looking at. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.